Good evening. We're calling to order the joint meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board and the Arlington Select Board for Monday, September 21st, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan. Here, thank you. Yep. Joseph Carl. Here. Stephen DeCourcy. Here. And Len Diggins. Here. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Cap Delane, town manager. Yes. Douglas Heim, town council. Here. And Ashley Marr, board administrator, is participating remotely. So, Rachel, sure. if you want to just confirm. Sure, I'm going to run through the um, names of the members of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Please answer here. Uh, Kim Lau. Here. Uh, David Watson. Here. Eugene Benson. Here. And Katie Levine Einstein. Here. And I'm Rachel Zemberry, and I'm here as well. Thank you. We also have our Director of Planning, Jennifer Reit. All right. Here. Good evening. This open meeting of the Arlington Select Board and Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature co public comment. Even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the Select Board is and the Arlington Redevelopment Board is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen's name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All of the materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are available on NOVA's agenda dashboard. And we recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on NOVA's unless the, chair, the chairs note otherwise. We're now turning to the first, on our, the first item on our agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate minutes. We'll introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each to speak or to provide comments, questions, or motions. Please hold, hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy, with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on certain agenda items. After members have spoken, I, we as the chairs will afford public comment opportunities as follows. We'll first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once we have a list of public commentators, we will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. Any vote tonight will be taken by roll call vote. All right, as we open it up, 
that brings us to welcome in. So we did our introductions. Do we want to run down our the the members again? We have on the agenda introductions, but I think Rachel, if if you agree, we can just jump. You know, we, we already went through. Everyone I agree. Attended, so jump to we'll jump to number three, presentation and discussion. So for this, we're going to turn to the town manager Adam Chapdelin to take the reins. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, I'll very briefly say a few words and then uh, further hand the reins to uh, Director of Planning and Community Development Jenny Rate who's gonna walk through the bulk of the agenda. Uh, I'd like to start by saying thank you to all of you, uh, both boards for carving out the time to come back and meet jointly uh, tonight. I know it seems like it seems like a very long time ago that these boards came together to meet and obviously uh, COVID-19 happened in the intervening period and subsequent meetings and actions that were talked about at the last meeting, uh, some, some have happened or some have made progress and, and some have not. But uh, again, I, I appreciate that we're all here tonight because the conversations that these two boards can have together, I think are very important to the town. They're very important to the present of the town and very important to the future of the town. So though I, I, don't, um, I don't actually foresee there being any actions taken by either board tonight, or at least I'm not planning on requesting any actions, but I think as we enter a cycle where we're looking at a special town meeting in November, uh, and certainly a time period where a warrant will, will be opening for an annual town meeting next spring, uh, not in the all too distant future that uh, the time uh, the time is ripe for these two boards to uh, pick up their dialogue, um, have a discussion around the issues that will be highlighted tonight and continue to talk about the, the path forward. So with that, Jenny, if, um, if you're ready, I'd, I'd ask you to start providing some of the updates that you prepared as part of the agenda. Great. Thank you, Adam. And thank you to all of you for joining us tonight, including the people who are participating uh, with us remotely. Um, we'll look forward to hearing your comments. Um, so I'm going to review a number of different items. This is all verbal presentation. Um, I'm happy to stop at any point in time if you feel like you need me to pause and clarify anything, but I'll move through the content um, as it's listed on the agenda. So the first item was just a, a review of what happened on January 13th when we last met as a group, which was sort of an, a historic evening for us. Uh, we hadn't met as two boards, uh, from my understanding, in a very long time. So it was a very remarkable evening. We were in the senior center. A lot has changed there too, by the way. Um, it's completely under construction in that room. Um, and we had an excellent presentation actually that evening uh, by Adam who talked about the status of housing in Arlington. He outlined current housing needs and projected demand for all types of housing, both in Arlington as well as introducing us to what's going on in Metro Boston and how that relates back to Arlington. He also emphasized the affordability crisis that's going on, not just in Arlington, but also with uh, beyond um, our borders. Um, I also then discussed plans that are in progress, uh, sort of select plans. We do a lot of long range planning in the planning department, obviously, but focused on a few plans and I'm going to revisit that a little bit later as well. Um, we also agreed upon a process by which we would consider and review zoning war warrant articles together. I think that's uh, what Adam was talking about. And that process involves both the chair of each one of these boards, as well as myself, Adam, and Doug Heim. And uh, being able to meet and discuss those articles and talk about a process by which we would review them and also um, either the, the select board having a role in them and of course the redevelopment board having a role with any zoning warrant article. But we also talked about town bylaw uh, amendments as well. We also held a briefing on proposed articles that were going to the annual town meeting back in the spring, which of course was stunted. But at that time we were talking about two articles. One was the affordable housing trust fund and the other one was the transfer fee. Um, both of those, we had some excellent presentations. We even talked about the potential for how much uh, revenue we might receive from a transfer fee. Um, then we talked about an outreach strategy for a community dialogue around housing. And we, we gained a little bit of agreement around what to do with that. Um, and also agreed that we would come back and finalize things with each board. And then it would be sort of uh, the work that we would agree to do together and carried out by my department and team. Then we held an open forum, which of course uh, yielded a number of uh, very uh, interesting remarks and comments, both uh, 
about affordability, about concerns in the community, about uh, density, about taxes, and sort of themes that actually played out when we ended up launching that question campaign. So following the meeting, we solidified the town meeting warrant and review process, as I mentioned, as well as the community engagement strategy. My team launched the question campaign. Um, that's what we ended up calling it. Uh, that was the, the beginning of the engagement process. It actually was launched in March and went through July. It stayed open. We uh, allowed for uh, online comments, emails, and we also uh, set up a phone line so that people could actually call and leave us voicemail messages with questions. Nobody did that, but I still like the idea. Um, I'm hoping somebody calls me tonight with a question, but we, we don't have that line open anymore. So we did actually yield 55 questions on 65 different topics. Um, and then we, we wanted to take a look at those results. We took those results and we combined them with 27 open-ended questions that came out of the uh, Envision Arlington Town Survey, which uh, had a number of questions about housing in it and had sort of an open-ended question at the end. So we actually had a number of questions that came from that. And then we also coupled it with uh, 39 questions that came out of the community conversation about race and housing, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. That was on July 7th. So we took all of those questions together and noted a number of themes uh, as follows. Diversity and diverse housing types and the need for both. Um, issues around affordability uh, and broad agreement about the need to develop affordable housing and preserve housing uh, that is affordable. Uh, issues around density and affordable housing, both in support of greater density and people questioning um, how far we would go. A lot of questions about economic development, uh, discussion around taxes, and then people who raised questions about regional issues and concerns. We're still really sorting through the data and I would say it's inconclusive. It's, we did receive a lot of questions, there's a lot of interest there, but I think a lot more needs to be done and that's hopefully, you know, what's this conversation with both boards helps us to kind of get a better sense of the traction that we might gain again to either reopen a campaign or pivot and do something different. So, so that's what we, we yielded out of that conversation back in January, as well as the question campaign. In terms of various plan updates, we've been, some of you know this, of course, that we're doing a transportation plan for Arlington. It's called Connect Arlington. We'll be releasing the fact book on that soon, and we'll hold a second forum. We had a first forum that was somewhat well attended, a lot of engagement individually in the community on a survey, um, and a lot of individual comments uh, on the transportation plan itself. We hope to wrap that up by year's end. We're also doing a net zero plan. Some of you also know about that, which is uh, with the Clean Energy Future Committee. They've established uh, greenhouse gas emission measures and sort of thresholds to watch for and track and have created a draft action plan, which is currently under review. And that'll help us to achieve net zero by 2050 uh, per the select board's directive. Uh, around hopefully uh, get, gaining net zero. Uh, then uh, there's a couple of things that we've been studying. One is the economic analysis of industrial districts, which is meant, industrial zoning districts, which is meant to uh, help us to create zoning that would do a number of different things. First one is to support an increase in size and variety of spaces for light manufacturing and office spaces. Second is establishing parking requirements to support these uses and minimize the environmental impact of impervious surfaces. We also wanna leverage the connection to the Minuteman bikeway, which relates to pretty much all of our industrial zones, uh, require sustainable and resilient urban design, and then support economic development. We're also developing design guidelines for single and two family structures in uh, the lower density residential districts, which are the majority of the town. For that, we have draft guidelines as well as a draft review process that we're going to be sharing both these guidelines as well as the industrial zoning information at the October 5th um, Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting. So that'll be forthcoming and I'm glad to share that information with uh, the select board as well. We are also in the process of looking at updating the housing production plan. I'll come back to that one in a moment. And then, um, you know, I think everything this year has been about, you know, unfortunately, we've pivoted pretty much everything to focusing on the pandemic. And with that, we were able to create a Arlington Economic Development Recover Recovery Task Force, which includes uh, Rachel Zumberry and John Hurd participating, as well as Adam, 
uh, participating in those uh, meetings, which have happened mostly weekly. Uh, some of the reports have been coming back to the select board with updates, as well as various initiatives that have been approved during the time that that group has been meeting. I would say that um, a number of things have happened as a result of that. One of, one of the biggest things is utilizing community development block grant money through the CARES Act. Uh, we received a first very large pot of money and then we just received a second pot of money as well as leveraged funding through the Community Preservation Act. And in all told so far, we've assisted 23 businesses with $10,000 each, a range of different types of businesses to keep on their feet and keep going during the pandemic. And then we've also been able to assist 38 households with uh, rental assistance, about $1,175 a month for over a period of three months. And we're hoping to release new funds soon for that, including a new round of funding that just was announced, uh, in, I think last week. The task force itself though, has focused mostly on how to assist and keep business in business. <laughs> and that's meant a number of things. It's really focused on marketing and technical assistance, business promotion, providing pro bono assistance where needed, and leveraging as many outdoor opportunities as possible to keep people coming to our business community to shop and dine and everything else, as well as finding opportunities for people to do their conduct business in some of our parks. And that has also allowed us to, you know, maintain some institutions like people who have exercise classes to be able to maintain their business in our parks, which has been very successful. We've also leveraged funding through MassDOT for shared streets and spaces uh, grant opportunities, which is again, sort of repurposing outdoor spaces for outdoor activities instead of vehicles in most cases. And then lastly, um, application modernization, which is a, a long sounding description of trying to uh, expedite our internal as well as our external review processes for all of our different uh, types of businesses that we permit, um, licenses, applications, they come to the select board, some of them come to the redevelopment board, and trying to, and to many other boards and committees, and trying to really expedite that through an online application process, and we're hoping that that can move ahead as well. So we're looking at, you know, pivoting towards additional assistance in the long term for recovery, as well as supporting the business community for, through the winter, which I think is going to be very challenging and we're very, very much aware of that, including looking at arts and cultural events and activities and how to sustain that part of our community, which is very critical to the economic development component in our community. So that's the task force. Um, and that's, that's, of course, the high level overview of everything. Um, the housing production plan, just to go back to that, because that's the last in my list of items. That plan, as all of you, many of you know, it's a plan that's adopted by the, technically the planning board, which is the redevelopment board and the select board, or a council, depending upon what kind of community uh, charter you have, adopted by both boards. It's a five-year plan, and it is approved, once it's adopted locally, it's approved by the Department of Housing and Community Development, and in effect for five years. We actually did that process in 2015. It was adopted in 2016 and it is set to expire in October of next year. So we're already on the lookout for doing a plan update, which will be another comprehensive housing needs and demand assessment, which is based on various trends and regional growth factors. Um, we'll also look at the regulatory and non-regulatory constraints on development. Why are there issues where we can't redevelop or get the type of development that we would like to see, for example. We'll review what happened in 2016 and develop new strategies. And then we'll also integrate some of the information and policy outcomes that we are gaining as a result of participating in the Metro Mayor's Coalition uh, Housing Task Force, because that group is also now pivoting to the second phase of their work, which includes setting uh, housing goals. There will be a lot of public meetings and outreach, but it will be remotely as a result of the pandemic or until such time as we can gather together again in a room. Um, and we hope to conclude that in time for, so that what, by the time the next one expires, we have a new plan in place. So I am finished all of the things that I would like to tell you for now, and I'll open it up to see if there are questions. I'll turn it back to John, Mr. Sure. Hurd. So I actually have everyone up on my screen. So I, as opposed to going through everyone, if we have questions or comments, if someone can just raise your hand, Mr. Diggins? 
Hey, Mr. Chair. Um, Jenny, uh, so it seems like the time is pretty good with respect to the housing production plan to engage uh, MAPC with respect to Metro Future. Uh, any thoughts about that? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the Metro Common 2050 uh, plan, which is the next um, long range plan for the region, the greater Boston region is going on right now. And they're in the process of actually uh, updating those regional growth targets that I mentioned. So I don't have an update on that specifically right now, but the housing production plan would be aligned with that process so that we are aligned with other uh, similar communities as Arlington um, and to reach those targets. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you uh, both chairs, um, as well as our, our planning director. I guess I'll, I have five points. I'll just um, put them out. Um, if they can be addressed tonight, that's fine. If they can be addressed in the future, that's also good too. Um, regarding the um, October 4th redevelopment board meeting that um, our planning director spoke to, of course, any information we can get, as well as um, any um, input or help that the select board can provide. Um, I'll leave it to um, our planning director and our chair to coordinate that, but I'm definitely interested in that. Um, regarding the pandemic economic development um, group that our chair and our planning director are part of. Um, first, I wanna say thank you so much for you know, really working with um, changing conditions and, and safety and health conditions, um, having this committee and, and, and having it go forward. Um, I know as recently as today, <laughs> huh, I emailed um, regarding uh, some questions I have gotten about helping outdoor dining businesses sort of sustain through the cold weather and um, through Mr. Hurd and Ms. Rate, um, I understand with Allie Carter uh, that we're addressing that. I don't know, maybe Jenny, if you could just talk about that a little bit. And I have three more points after that. But that, that question came up a lot on like four or five different Facebook and email lists. Um, if you could just talk about that process and if I can get it back after that. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the October 5th meeting, I'll be happy to coordinate with, uh, through Adam uh, and get any feedback or comments uh, from the select board on that as well, on both the design guidelines as well as the economic analysis of industrial districts. Um, in terms of the outdoor heating, if you will, um, that is something, any current business that has a license, an outdoor dining license, the temporary license that's, that we've been issuing, they can contact Ali Carter directly um, or the health department if they need to, to update and have a review by the fire department for any addition of any outdoor heater or heaters that they would like to include in their outdoor space. Um, but it would be reviewed and then approved by the fire department as a separate, an add-on to our current permitting process. We are going to be amending the permit process to make it clear that any new outdoor licenses would include a review by the fire department, which is not currently part of the setup. Uh, but anything that is existing can uh, contact the town for a follow-up with the fire department to review and approve any heaters before installing them, please. Thank you so much. And um, I do want to say um, regarding, um, thank you, Mr. Hurd, through you, um, regarding the um, CDBG CARES Act outreach, um, the planning department's sort of, not sort of, oversaw uh, coordinated eff effort where their employees and some other people who were volunteers, including myself and um, members of the committee that got news out to the businesses. So um, I thought that was uh, laudatory and, and wanted to note my thanks for that because I know we're all doing Zoom meetings and trying to do what we can do from home, but I really feel the planning department um, kind of took to the streets and uh, spoke to the businesses that we want to keep in Arlington who really didn't know about the CBG CARES Act. Um, and I anticipate, hopefully, if they can get their act together down in Washington, D.C. and have a second allocation, that will replicate that. And I'll leave it to um, Ms. Ray, our planning director, about 
getting any further outreach because the planning de department staff, it's not that voluminous <laughs> and it's hard to get that word out. So um, the other thing is, uh, let me see, one, two, three. Um, regarding the special town meeting coming up, um, I would ask um, through the redevelopment board chairman and the planning director that if there is, and if there is not, that's okay. But if, if there are any um, ARB articles that, as we discussed previously, that, um, that the select board um, should join you on, um, as soon as we can get that information, that's great. And the converse is true, if there are any uh, select board articles. But right now, from where the select board is going, um, we have 18 citizen articles that were carried over from the spring. Um, so as far as we know, there's nothing new there. Um, second to last point is um, when the, my colleagues on the redevelopment board and planning director they think it's appropriate, and I kind of feel like it may have been put on hold because of COVID-19, the um, Gold's Gym Industrial Zone study, um, any updates we can get on that, uh, because I know that that's something I've long languished for um, under two previous town managers and town planning directors, but it's our current um, town manager and planning director that uh, put that out for bid to uh, look at our only industrial zone and have that as a study, but I anticipate that's sort of you know, been put on hold. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And then the other thing is I was talking to our colleague, um, Clarissa Rowe earlier in the day, and we were talking about CPA and open spaces and um, how to best plan for that and what projects were gonna be submitted. So I'd like to ask um, both the town manager and the planning director an idea that Clarissa and I sort of bantied about that we feel um, could or would be beneficial and not be a high ticket cost item. Clarissa estimated it'd be 10,000 or less um, because there's been a lot of talk around this subject. So we, we were talking about um, could the town, um, either through the town manager or the planning um, director, um, call for a sort of 3D schematic imaging uh, in terms of open spaces that we have here in Arlington. And we, we saw all different ways that it might be useful. Some have been um, from Arlington residents talking about um, projects proposed in open spaces and what the effects they feel would be. And Clarissa and I were saying if, you know, we had this 3D schematic imaging uh, available, it would either uh, agree with that uh, probably more times than not might show the actual uh, mechanics that um, while their exercises they went through weren't actually what was going to happen. So the, the, the pure intent in that is finding um, not only the best way, we know where the open spaces are, but in terms of projects that um, could be proposed that some uh, initial uh, lack of support could be backed up by this 3D schematic in, uh, imaging. Um, so I don't know if that's an Adam, a Jenny question, both or someone else. And that's my last thing. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Lau. Uh, thank you, Diane, for bringing that up. That's uh, uh, that's something we've been discussing for quite some time, and uh, I I totally 100% agree with you that uh, this SketchUp model. Uh, along Mass Ave um, would be a, a great tool um, for the citizens of Arlington just to understand um, where the massing of the buildings are existing and proposed, uh, where the open spaces are and where they may remain or be changed a little bit. Uh, and also it's a great uh, 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 economic um, a uh, tool that we can use to encourage development um, in town because it's a tool that um, you can say, okay, I can, uh, here's where I can build or here's, here's what my, uh, 
here's what I, what I, the massing I can build, or uh, uh, which shows uh, um, shadow studies. It, it shows how, how it interacts. And it might bring back to also uh, circle around to zoning. And you can see how uh, all, all the properties the long mass have are cut up in these little small pieces. And it may be hard uh, to actually go forward with uh, any any development, and maybe there's some maybe there's uh, some talk about maybe combining or rezoning certain areas where we can encourage uh, some growth, plan growth that is that would address housing, it, it would address um, the industrial, it would it would address uh, business mixed use, all that stuff, and I think this would be a great tool. And uh, I would 100% encourage, uh, I would help any way I can to make this come through. I think this is a great tool. We talked about this uh, a while back and uh, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad you, uh, um, you know, I would, I would be willing to uh, answer any questions where if what we can't do, we can't do, but I really encourage that we, we do this. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chaplin. So I, I want to answer um, both Ms. Mahan and Mr. Lau's uh, point, but um, another member just let me know that people watching on cable don't seem to be able to hear us. So Sean Keen from ACMI, I don't know if you could check any of the settings and see if there's something that can be toggled to help those watching uh, on, on television be able to hear the speakers. Can, can I ask the manager? Sorry, I'm is it troubleshooting? Uh, it should be fixed shortly. Okay, thank you. Okay. You just answered my question. When you mean speakers, you mean anybody, not just the people that have been, that spoke recently. Thank you. So to back back to the points you both just raised, um, uh, Ms. Wright and I had spoken about that uh, several weeks ago. Now, where we left it off at was getting some prices for doing the work and then determining where we might be able to access the funding. Um, we, we were talking about it in the context of what um, Kin had mentioned uh, along Mass Ave. We hadn't been looking at it from the open space perspective that you spoke about, uh, Ms. Mahan, but we can, um, we can take a look at what that expanded scope would look like. And as you, uh, as you suggested, I, I, I don't know offhand how it would fare, but a CPA application could certainly help with that, so we'll, um, Jenny and I can follow up, uh, see how far she's gotten with some prices and see what it would cost to add on open spaces. Yep, Ms. Reed. Thank you, Mr. Hurd, and thank you, Ms. Mahan, um, and Mr. Lau. Um, so uh, we, we have been investigating the prices uh, for how much it would cost to uh, have somebody's services to do what you're talking about. Um, we can also expand upon that as Mr. Chapdelaine has suggested. I will say though that we do have in hand a SketchUp that we can utilize and uh, be able to do some of the things that you're talking about. So perhaps we'll take a look at more closely and may need to follow up with you more directly to understand a little bit more about what you might be looking for and also uh, investigate the possibilities of a CPA application. Um, I just wanna say quickly thank you also for complimenting my team and the work of my team, which I did not specifically call out, but it, without that team, I could, wouldn't be providing you with that very long update about various plans and activities that I just suggested, um, including Aaron Zwerko, Ali Carter, Kelly Linema, Dan Amstutz, Ken Pruitt, um, and the, Emily Sullivan, the rest of the group. Um, we have a new hire actually, who's doing community development block grant, Mallory, Mallory uh, Sullivan. So um, it's, finally a, a full team again, and uh, looking forward to continuing all this work. So thank you for the compliment. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you very much. And, and uh, thank you to the, the director, Ms. Wright, for the uh, presentation. Um, first, I wanna say that I, I know that our, at our last meeting last week, we did receive the um, your correspondence regarding the um, automation of uh, applications and and uh, I was really happy to see that that there had been a small working group that um, included uh, Ms. Carter, Mr. Krauski, um, Mrs. Sullivan who used to be in our office um, 
uh, Mr. Heim and I think Mr. Feeney and I may be missing some folks who had looked at that. And I think that the workflow, the very helpful workflow around um, permits and applications was one of the uh, outputs of that. So I'm, I'm glad to see that being taken to the next step. Um, and I think we have potentially some things that we could do as well to, to try to help um, uh, continue looking at, you know, what we ask for and permits and applications just, just to streamline the process for um, uh, <laughs> new businesses as we try desperately to hold on to, to um, the ones that we have. Um, I had two questions on the, the housing. So on the housing production plan, as we ramp up, I'm, one of my questions is, um, is part of the process going to be taking a look at what we approved um, as the housing production plan, the, the last go around and kind of benchmarking, see how we did against that within this period before we, we um, undertake the next step? Um, yes, we will be benchmarking to determine what we've achieved and also getting a better sense of what we couldn't achieve and why, um, which was outlined in the 2016 plan. We've already got a good sense of that because we work directly with the Housing Plan Implementation Committee and as, as well as the Master Plan Implementation Committee to get a sense of how much we've achieved and progress on implementation. Um, a number of things that haven't happened are many zoning amendments actually that we had hoped to achieve in order to achieve housing production goals. But there have been things that we have achieved with the Housing Corporation of Arlington and in a couple of other instances where we were able to produce new units or preserve existing affordable housing. So we'll, we'll definitely be doing that in more detail in the update. Great, thank you very much. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, you know, I'm glad to hear the work to, to distribute the, the rent support for folks who, who are uh, struggling um, during this time. Um, you know, one of the things I lose sleep over is, is when I read stories about the potential of an impending eviction wave um, in the country. And I don't know if you're getting any signals on the basis of inquiries around that support or not, um, uh, around that being a, a real and present danger for Arlington. I have not directly received any um, notifications to that effect, but I'm certain that Aaron Zwerko has received people contacting us, asking for assistance, um, looking for various kinds of assistance, uh, sometimes confusing us with the Arlington Housing Authority <laughs> um, or the Housing Corporation, but generally just uh, the challenge of navigating the process and needing help right away. We find that all the time, uh, regardless of the pandemic actually, but um, I would say that it is ex definitely exacerbated by the pandemic and we are, I also lose sleep overnight, <laughs> uh, many nights over this issue and um, think that it's very important for the town to be finding as many ways as possible to assist if it can. So the, the funding that we have and the new funding that we received from CDBG, the most recent amount, um, that might be used to provide additional assistance and support to tenants to stay in place. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is your question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurd. And uh, Ms. Hurd, I, I do want to start by echoing my colleagues' uh, comments, thanking your team. Um, we receive a number of presentations throughout the year um, from members of your staff, and it, it's 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 enlightening, and it, it it's also um, you know just just helpful for to. Uh, keep us abreast of what's going on in town. So thank you for that. Um, just a question on sustaining businesses. Um, and Mrs. Mahan brought this up earlier, but I, um, it, it is getting colder out and, and I had an experience at a restaurant in town over the weekend and it just really concerned me because the opportunities for outdoor dining um, are gonna become more limited. And, and um, I'm wondering within the aid that is provided to businesses, is, is there, potentially CDBG funds that, that could be available to, to help purchase like hard goods to, to, to help businesses with, with outdoor seating or is this more or less related to just keeping the operations going in, in, in payroll type um, functions? We're exploring what we can utilize with the latest amount of funding and we do actually have a small amount remaining 
from the first pool of funding that I mentioned. So we, we made awards to uh, actually not as many businesses as we could have. So we're going to go back to businesses that had requested funds but didn't end up completing the application originally uh, to see if they're interested. But then I think trying to figure out a way that we can build in the supports that you're talking about to sustain uh, businesses through the winter. Because yes, I think they will need assistance. Great, thank you. And just a, a comment too, you, you talked about the housing production plan and about the um, industrial zone study that was just being completed. And, and we just went through this process on the MIRAC site at 1165 Mass Ave. And one of the things that we were confronted with was um, frankly some inconsistencies between the housing production plan and, and its call for perhaps overlay zoning districts that would allow for residential in the industrial zone and the economic analysis, which basically said no residential in, in, in industrial zones. And, and I know that study is just about complete, but it, it, it seems to me that to the extent that we have studies going forward in different parts of town, um, unless the, the consultant feels that, that that recommendation may not be valid and, and it should be changed, it feels like that's gonna be incorporated into the analysis because you have some inconsistencies and you try to work your way through them, but it, it, uh, that, that one was, was glaring as I was going through that study. Um, I will just note the earlier comment by Ms. Mahan about Gold's Gym, that's incorporated within the economic analysis of, of industrial uh, districts. So we will be talking about that district, uh, that zone, as well as all the other zones. So that's related to the October 5th presentation. And then to Mr. DeCourcy's point, um, yes, there are definitely some, some things that might uh, present some inconsistencies. I think partially it's because we're looking at trying to support as many options as possible. So I think at one point with the housing production plan, we had hoped, and we still hope, that a 40R zoning overlay district could be something that we might explore in town, either led by the town or in partnership with uh, somebody in the community. And um, I still see that as being an opportunity. It's actually something that's come up as part of the net zero planning process. The master plan talked about perhaps allowing residential with mixed use but we subsequently, when we adopted mixed use in 2016, which was after the master plan, we did not allow residential as part of mixed use. The economic analysis of the industrial districts will talk about how, if at all, we might be able to incorporate residential. So we are trying to, there is still that conversation, but there's also many people in the community who believe there shouldn't be residential in those zones. So I think, you know, we're, we're trying to balance it, but also keep those opportunities open. I don't know if that helps address the No, that, that, that helps. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional comments, questions at this time? Yep, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Jenny talked uh, about the outreach plan that was in place around housing and uh, housing affordability and commercial development um, prior to the pandemic starting. And I, I'm glad that the planning department was able to move forward with the question campaign and has, has gotten a fair amount of input from that. But I, I think with the pandemic, um, it has perhaps accelerated the urgency of addressing housing development and affordability as well as commercial development in Arlington, and I'd like to see us um, redouble our efforts um, to uh, to engage the community on those issues using Zoom and, and other technologies that we have available to us um, to, to get um, the kind of input that we had hoped to do in person um, prior to the pandemic. Um, and uh, I, I hope we can all agree on uh, moving forward with, with that kind of a plan uh, sooner rather than later. All right, thank you. And so Ms. Reed, did you have additional comments to go through? 
I didn't have anything else to go through. I'm glad to answer any other questions or take any comments. Um, the last comment made by Mr. Watson, just to say that I think the question is whether or not we keep that a separate campaign or if we incorporate it into the housing production plan process, which, which will have its own outreach and engagement, um, but it would be tied to the development of an actual plan. Um, my team would be happy to continue either the question campaign or figure out other ways to have engagement on the topic of housing and economic development as well. But I'd want it to be tied to probably the housing production plan since that's going to be a focal point for the coming year. That, that would be my own preference. Okay. Mr. Watson? Uh, I, I agree with uh, Ms. Wright that that uh, that probably makes sense at this point to tie it to the revision of the housing production plan uh, since we have been uh, delayed in, in doing other outreach. Um, so um, um, well, that's that's really all I wanted to say. And Mr. Chaplin, did you have anything additional at this point? No, no, I, I had nothing further to, to, to share tonight, no. Right. Chair Zembri, do you have anything? Oh, do you wanna? Uh, Mr. Lau? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like this. Um, the Redevelopment Board has gone through quite a bit of change this year and also um, reviewed quite a few projects um, that has got quite a bit of a, um, comments from a few um, town residents and uh, I'm just would like to reach out to you guys uh, on the select board and say what are your feelings uh, how we've been doing this we've been trying our best to uh, follow what we feel is right but I would like to see uh, some maybe some comments some support some criticism of how we are looking at development and and we can talk about it um, as you know what we've done and then what you guys may think of as us going forward i think that is a good thing to come out of this uh joint meeting sure do any of the select board members have any specific comments to address the ARB? Mrs. Mahan? Um, um, Diane, we're having some trouble with your audio. The select board and ARB relationship, I can say. Oh. How about now? Or should you want to come back to me? Now I can hear you. I can hear me. Okay. Um, I, I want to since uh, I was sorry, it's uh, Diane still breaking up. Nineteen ninety nine. Um, former cause, former town manager. You know what? I'll jump in later. See if one of my so colleagues has a better connection. All right. Do you have any additional comments from the select board? Well, no, no news is good news, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, we, as a board, we try all, all, all the, the committees and boards that we appoint to operate independently. And, um, you know, I, from what I could see, I think you guys take everything very, take a thorough analysis of each matter that gets put before you. And, you know, I have nothing but good things. And, no criticisms, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Diggins. Len, get on Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I, I just unmuted myself. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, can I answer, answer your question um, uh, a bit later? Uh, I, I really do intend to get a lot more involved in housing. And I've been reading a lot lately. I'm very excited. And, uh, about getting more involved. I, I'm hoping to get um, a lot more involved with the housing 
um, the HPIC, the Housing Plan Implementation Committee, uh, made, when I asked a question to Ms. Ray about uh, Metro Common, made, that's my signal me that I want to get a sense of how we can come at this problem in a more comprehensive way. Because as you know, I mean, this is a regional issue. And, and I not only want to get at the housing production aspect of it, but also the housing uh, affordability um, aspect of, of, of the issue. And, and that not only deals with the cost of the house housing itself, but also uh, income that people are, are making. So, so um, we're gonna do more of these. And then when you ask that question next time, I'll have more of an answer. So, uh, but thanks for asking that question. Mrs. Nod, do you, do you want to take another crack? Oh, I'm also afraid. Um, I, I would echo Mr. Diggins' uh, comments. Um, since I got on the board, this is something I've always strived to have a partnership with the redevelopment board and basically hit brick walls. Um, and I, I want to thank Mr. Hurd and Ms. Ms. Zemsbury um, for coordinating this. I think we should uh, definitely do more in the future, especially around what, whether we have a regular town meeting or a special town meeting, things that maybe not necessarily we need support from either board, but um, sort of a heads up education um, because in terms of what goes on in Arlington, the redevelopment board and select board, it's sort of a pretty vast universe of what comes before town meeting. It's not the total. Um, and I think if we can both educate ourselves and have both chairs uh, currently through Chairman Hurd uh, and Chairwoman Zemsbury, um, just give us all the best knowledge that we need to have. Um, that's the best way we're going to be able to um, put forth the positive agenda of Arlington and ensure that um, maybe it might not necessarily be what each board independently proposes, but after we have that conversation, we come to the ultimate best uh, decision for the town of Arlington around affordable housing, around business, retaining businesses, um, as well as open spaces and, and things like that. And I will leave it with Mr. Uh, Chairman Hurd and, and Chairwoman Zemsbury to follow up um, with the town manager and uh, Jenny Rate regarding the um, Previous thing I spoke to, the 3D schematic imaging um, on open spaces along Mass Ave. If, if uh, my colleagues on the redevelopment board feel it's beneficial and should be expanded beyond that, um, I'd be guided by their input. So um, thank you to both chairs. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the, the question, Mr. Lau. I think my philosophy is generally that um, as regards the, the the regulatory role of other boards, I, I don't think it's really appropriate for us to um, specifically weigh in as far as as far as that goes. I, I think where you do have matters that come before you that potentially, um, you know, might have some impacts for us, might have parking or, or traffic implications or whatnot. I think just. Um, it might be helpful for us to have advisories just at, at some point, just just to understand what what went into a decision, because we might, you know, we might feel the downstream impacts of that. But that's not a specific criticism, criticism or, or comment. It's just um, a, a suggestion. I I think that there's a lot of benefit with this forum, though, um, in trying to align on um, you know policy prerogatives, and I think that that's what brought this these um, joint meetings, um, you know, in, into being. So I think as, as we agreed at our last, um, last joint meeting, I think that having us on, on um, weigh in on certain, you know, policy proposals to town meeting uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, I think maybe, <clears throat> you know, the next iteration of the, of the housing pr production plan, I know that uh, I believe both boards had to, um, um, approve that and adopt it, but it might might make sense for us to meet jointly um, uh, when we're when we're approaching that that milestone um, as as well. So, I you know I think that that's pretty much the way that I would um, uh, I, I would respond. Um, uh, so just just keep keep us in mind if any of your decisions potentially have downstream impacts on 
on our regulatory authorities over, you know, parking or, or traffic or, or, or whatnot. Just, um, I, I think having advisories would be, would be helpful. Mr. DeCourcy? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Hurd. And um, thank you, Mr. Lyle, for the question. I, I do agree with Mr. Kern as it relates to the, to the comments on the regulatory aspects of, of the redevelopment board. But I do want to say, I, I look at the redevelopment board as one of the, the most challenging boards to be on the town. I have tremendous respect for the work that each and every one of you are doing. And, and I know, you know we've seen some of the hearings that, that have gone on over the past year and I know each and every one of you are looking to act in the best interest of the town and, and to, to make projects better that come before you. Um, but I, you know, beyond that, I, I, I don't feel it's appropriate to comment on, on individual things, but I, I appreciate the service that each, each of you is doing. And, and I know from talking to people who formerly were on the board and uh, over the years, it's, it's, it's a big ask and it's, it's, it's very technical and it's very detailed work and, and we appreciate it. Yes. I'll just jump in. It's your meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just jump in. I didn't want to speak over anybody. Um, yep. I just want to thank you all, every every member of the select board, for your for your comments. And um, I, I also just wanted to to make an observation that I know that over the past couple of months, it's been very challenging conducting these meetings um, uh, remotely, and for all of the things that we're all facing. But there are certainly some positives that have come out of it. I've certainly noticed that the um, participation in our in our meetings um, has has gone up from people sitting in who normally wouldn't attend, be able to attend um, attend meetings. So I, I actually hope that when we're able to meet in person, that the opportunity to to still broadcast via Zoom um, still ex exists. Um, it, it seems like there's been more engagement, which has been wonderful to see. I'd be interested to to hear your thoughts. Um, on the select board if you've observed anything similar. And, uh, you know, I also appreciate the having had the opportunity to work uh, on the Arlington Economic Recovery Task Force with Chairman Hurd. Um, it's, it's been great to bring both of our perspectives together as we're working together with the businesses in town um, and to, to see where there are opportunities for the select board to, to assist as well as those of us uh, from the redevelopment board to to really um, bolster the the businesses in town when they when they need it the most, um, and, and I'm really encouraged by things moving forward out of necessity, but really um, really pushing us as forward as a town with things such as the automation of applications and the streamlining of um, approvals processes. So, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge some of the. Um, the things that have, I think are actually going to help us significantly as a town that we've had to do out of necessity um, during these times. Thank you. Any additional comments? All right. So now, I think Mr. Diggins had his hand up. Oh, Mr. Diggins. Well, well, thanks, thanks, uh, Mr. Curo. I mean, I was going to let it go, but I was just going to answer. Uh, uh, um, uh, Ms. Um, Ms. Berge, uh, she asked about how things are going with the select board with respect to the Zoom meetings. And yes, uh, we, we see an increase in um, participation also. And we did our goals meet. And one of our, our goals was to um, think about how to incorporate a, this technology into our meetings once um, we are able to meet in person again. And, and, um, and, and, uh, and I'll just add that. Um, uh, I have a lot of thoughts to me. Adam will tell you that I have a lot of thoughts to me, but I'm holding back now because I'm really interested in open forum and I'm still feeling pretty new at this. I mean, and I took Mr. Um, Lyle's question, not so much as me, us as select board members, I mean, um, stepping on the toes, for lack of a better phrase, I mean, of the, of the ARB, but more so as individual um, residents, I me, mean, how did we feel things are going in? And I'll certainly be making a lot of input as a resident uh, about about things, because we still get to do that even when we're in this position. So uh, that will be it. Thank you. 
I'm remiss if I didn't say as part of our discussions at our goal setting meeting that we credit our former colleague Kevin Greeley for being way ahead of his time for remote technology. He's been pushing for years for to uh, to have remote technology in our meeting. So we finally were able to get it for him. All right. So without any additional hands that will turn us to our open forum. So now at this point, if you can use the raise hand function on your Zoom application, if you want to speak at the open, open forum, it will generate a list. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board, the boards shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. We will generate a list. There is no limit on what to be spoken about, but I just note that we anticipate a long open forum, and if anybody is reiterating a comment that's previously been made, please try to limit that. And so with this, I will turn to our town manager to generate the list. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we have about 20 hands raised. Um, do you want me to just read them to you one by one? Would you like me to give them to you as they're raised now? How would you like to handle that? You can give them one by one. Okay, so the first name, uh, first hand raised is Kevin Heat. Right. And we can promote him. Okay. Mr. Heaton, can you hear us? Mr. Heaton, can you unmute yourself? All right, with, we'll move down the list. What's the uh, second name? Sorry, Patricia Warden. All right, you can promote Ms. Warden. Mrs. Warren, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. If you can just say your name and address and... My name is Patricia Warden, and I live at 27 Jason Street. Um, thank you for the opportunity to say something. I do want to emphasize that um, as a member of the Housing Policy Implementation Committee, we have done very little this year. We have um, encouraged a uh, movement towards the, uh, the town meeting articles on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and the transfer fee. But otherwise, there has been almost no progress, and disappointingly so, since some members of that committee, um, at least two of us, have suggested repeatedly um, that we should move towards purchasing existing buildings, renovating them, and renting them at affordable rates to needy people. That has not been followed despite the large, um, the large staff at planning and they're fairly well paid. So that has been disappointing. Um, I would like to um, also point out that we are losing a tremendous amount of, um, of businesses and probably affordable housing. We have already lost some due to speculation because there is so much um, permission of the redevelopment board for um, violation of the zoning bylaws that developers now feel they can get anything they want by just demolishing things and, uh, and removing restaurants, businesses, houses that could have been renovated for affordability and um, leaving a hole in the ground 
uh, so that they can get whatever they want from the for a permit uh, by threatening to just leave the hole in the ground if they don't get what they want in their permit. And that is not a rule, a, a, a community that has rule of law, it's a rule of, of extortionists actually. Um, and um, as regards the um, Ms. Mahan's uh, mention of 3D uh, exhibits for um, open space, I should, and Mr. Lau's comments in that regard, I should say that um, our open space and, and attractive amenities are also being endangered by the actions of the B Development Board and would be greatly endangered by uh, the, develop, the planning director's idea about um, 40R um, enactment and um, adoption in Arlington, which would be disastrous. Just take, for example, the recent the situation at 1500 Massachusetts Avenue, where there was a very attractive set of tree, huge trees and um, a house that had three units in it, it's going to be destroyed because the developer hopes to get an illegal apartment in there with a commercial unit so that he can call it mixed use, but it isn't really proper mixed use because one of the uses is not allowed in that district. Also, that is a very attractive area. Across the street is one of the loveliest areas in town, which is the start of the mystic uh, of the- This is one, you're just yes. over three minutes, if you can just wrap up that thought. So I would hope that there will be a great change in the redevelopment force approach to this town, and I hope we can do more work on the Housing Policy Implementation Commission. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our next speaker. Next speaker is Donna Kelly Williams. Okay. <clears throat> Mrs. Kelly Williams, are you with us? I am. Thank you so much for taking my um, comments again tonight. Um, my name is Donna Kelly Williams. I live at 110 Mary Street in Arlington. Uh, I was very happy to have addressed the, both the redevelopment board as well as the select board last week, as well as reaching out to the town manager, to Daniel Amstrutz, and uh, let me see if I missed anyone. Um, the redevelopment board, the select board, all about my concerns about the number of Mary Street residents that had asked and requested for a reconsideration of the proposed plans for the shared Mary Street, um, which I did hear that, I did not hear from any of the people I reached out to, and, and I'd like to address that to Mr. Lau, who was looking for um, how we were doing with communication. Well, clearly there hasn't been any. Um, I, my request was on behalf of the majority of the Mary Street residents that were in opposition of what was proposed, that despite having reached out to all of you, that we learned of the grant being received by the town in the patch, no communication with us directly. So that is my concern going forward. I had asked for the reconsideration and I continue to ask for reconsideration for inclusion of the majority of the Mary Street residents that are in opposition to the plan as proposed. We're certainly looking forward to um, having an opportunity to discuss this further. So that's my point on the shared Mary Street incident and then I surely hope that I will hear from somebody on that. My second concern is my uh, reaching out to the Board of Health both today as well as a couple of weeks ago with the increased rodent activity in the town. As a registered nurse, I'm very, very concerned with the increased activity and really the lack of response that I'm seeing from the town. So I hope that all of the members that are on the call tonight will look into this and look at ways of not only responding to residents that are raising the alarm on the increased rodent activity, but also what is the response of the town given this is not a private property issue, this is a town-wide issue as I see rodents running down 
the middle of the street at all hours of the days and nights. Um, so I hope that you can help me with this. It is not limited just to my area of the town, as I have many family members scattered about the town that are also reporting the same activity. So I will now yield my time and I look forward to hearing from uh, most, if not all of you, um, with the concerns raised as a member of this community and a very proud member of the Arlington community for over 40 years. So thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kelly Williams. <clears throat> all right, and that uh, will bring us to number four. Mark Capeline. All right. All right, Mr. Kaplan, can you hear us? Mr. Kaplan, if you can just unmute yourself. Yep, done. Oh, we can hear you now. Um, can you just say your name and address for the record? Okay. Uh, I'm Mark Kaplan, 11 Palmer Street. Um, yeah, I don't see myself. Okay, we can hear you though. All right, thank you. I'm Mark Kepline, 11 Palmer Street, Arlington. I was deeply offended that the town manager made false and unsubstantiated claims against residents supporting police on the eve of the 9-11 anniversary. Did he really need to demoralize police further and disparage the good people of Arlington for supporting our police? All on town letterhead and to the media. The weak innuendo was surely sourced from the hateful group calling itself Arlington Fights Racism, which he then spread across the media collaborating with AFR to intimidate residents from exercising their rights to free speech and assembly is unforgivable. His actions fueled AFR's campaign to draw outside agitators to Arlington and harass police supporters. While America Backs the Blue has only been associated with peaceful support for our public safety professionals, BLM events are associated with rioting, burning, looting, and murder, costing an estimated billion dollar losses. BLM signage represents lawlessness and has no place in Arlington, and certainly not on public buildings, schools, in the face of Arlington residents, and not as an affront to our police. All these banners need to be removed from public property and signed bylaws enforced. Flagrant violations at churches make them eyesores. Only after Black Lives Matter changes their name and clenched fist logo should signs be reconsidered. Why would the town manager do such irresponsible things as put out false claims and remove the sticker honoring a fallen police officer in the line of duty? Why work for AFR and not the people of Arlington? Did he need another progressive feather in his resume to continue his exit from Arlington? Giving his resignation instead of Lieutenant Pedrini's head would satisfy AFR's bloodthirst if not for their inexhaustible demands. Mr. Chaplain's next progressive destination will be no escape from these sorts of people. But I've concluded that indulging the bloodthirsty and hateful Arlington fights racism, brats at all, was the biggest mistake by the select board. There is no making these miserable whingers happy. Most seem to have enjoyed a life of privilege. Mr. Kaplan, you're right at three minutes, if you can just wrap okay. up your thought, please. Almost done. They have, most seem to have enjoyed a life of privilege and only become more petulant when told no. COVID interrupting their weekly therapy <laughs> sessions only acts, exacerbated their behavior. Nobody called President Obama for turning back illegal alien invaders, and Lieutenant Petrini is not one. All right, again, Mr. Kaplan, if you can wrap up your thought, we have 20 people. Imagine supporting law, order, and safety as an act of hate to them. Thank you. All right, and number five on our list. Uh, 
Carl Wagner. All right, we can promote Mr. Wagner. Recorded. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. You can just Great. say your name and address for the record. Yeah, this is Carl Wagner. Uh, I live at 30 Edge Hill Road in Arlington, Mass. Um, I wanted to uh, thank everybody on both boards, the select board and the ARB for the job that you've been doing. This has been an incredibly difficult time, not just because of uh, Zoom meetings, but because of everything that the coronavirus and the and, and, and terrible raging of the uh, pandemic has brought to us. Um, Notwithstanding Mr. Kapoline's relatively uh, offensive comments, uh, there is also the, the huge issue of BLM and all the other stuff going on, which people care a lot, and the town is also having to deal with. So thank you to um, you folks who are civil servants who are working through that. I did have several points I wanted to make. Um, and this is really important, this meeting. I thank you for doing this and including the public and including us visually. Um, I think I'm going to address uh, some points about ARB meetings in the future, uh, where visual uh, meeting uh, attendance by the public is not allowed. Anyway, I think the, the select board really has to indicate to the ARB that it should follow the rules and the bylaws that are set by the people, the voters, the residents of Arlington. Recently, we have seen, those of us that attend through the Zoom meetings, that the ARB decisions at least, not to speak of individuals on the ARB, but the ARB decisions have been creating really dangerous situations where the laws are just being overlooked or disregarded as if they're uh, reference points rather than actual things that have to be maintained. Um, this is concerning and it sets a dangerous precedent for a lot of small parcels where a lot of small businesses are currently just barely making ends meet. And if those properties turn over, and I'm talking about Jiraiya as number one and uh, other areas can be thought of in the, in the East Arlington and center of town, those small businesses will be lost, the density will come in, the new apartments will be much more expensive. So it's very important that ARB follow the rules and laws. Secondly, I'd like to ask that there are only five of you who should recognize what the policy that benefits the people, the residents, the taxpayers in town is. And you should direct with your energy what the, what the ARB does and the town employees, such as the planning department and the town manager to make the first and most important uh, stakeholder, us, the people who live and work here. Those are general items. Specifically, there are three things I wanted to point out. Specifically, it's been a real problem in very, very recent ARB meetings that the public's input has been limited during coronavirus. Uh, time limits were imposed, video has been taken away from the public, and materials are posted later than required. This is a problem. It really should change. Uh, number two, board decisions, as I mentioned, are really not keeping with laws and rules in Arlington. This is very dangerous, and it's probably illegal. Number three, the town has held several racism community conversations. Unfortunately, two of these untruthfully attempted to say that housing zoning or building zoning is racist or is equated with racist. It's just totally wrong. And I've got to call out the town manager, unfortunately, even though I support what he's doing normally with coronavirus and to try and fix the Pedrini situation. In one of these meetings, the first one, the town manager said- Mr. Wagner, if I can just say, because you're at your three minutes, if you can just wrap up your thoughts. The town manager said that people who are opposing his urbanization, density, and removing of zoning laws are guilty of dog whistle racism. And while I don't support what Mark Capeline said in its entirety, I am completely offended that I am a dog whistle racist because I want to make Arlington affordable and diverse for all. Thank you. All right. Next speaker, Anna Henkin. Ms. Henkin? Yep. All right, we can hear you. If you could just say your name and address for the record. Hi, Anna Henkin, 11 Marion Road. Um, I want to comment on the board's decision to remove the Black Lives Matter banner from the Hound Hall. I am strongly against the removal of the banner, but more urgently, I want to address the board's unacceptable rhetoric that was used to justify its removal. The language the board used was disgraceful, bigoted, and terrifying. 
I feel unsafe in an Arlington that is represented by the remarks made in the September 14th meeting in reference to the town's commitment to equity and in reference to Black Lives Matter as a movement. The board has stated that they wanted to take down the Black Lives Matter banner to allow bigots to feel welcome in town government. I do not want bigots to ever feel welcome in town government. When you do not directly and explicitly reject discrimination and hate, you are telling those of us who are queer and disabled and minorities that our personhood is not worth protecting, that we do not belong here, that we, our existence, our safety is not worth hurting the feelings of bigots. How dare you look us in the eyes and tell us our personhood is not worth defending and then pat yourselves on the back like you're somehow the good guys here. You're supporting hatred and you're letting bigots bully our town government. The board stated that they felt that the Black Lives Matter movement and banner was an insult to police and specifically Diane Mahone said that Black Lives Matter is a socialist political organization that encourages disobedience against the police and violence, which is woefully misinformed at best and a known racist dog whistle. And this insinuation, of course, leads to the conclusion that the board thinks the police are racist and should have been offended by the banner, which is not a good look for you guys. The board called the Black Lives Matter affiliated protesters belligerent and violent, which contrasts sharply with my experience being one of them and with witness statements from other members of the counter protest. What were the back the blue chanting while they protested because we were chanting the names of the dead. We were mourning. We have been threatened. We have been intimidated. We have had slurs hurled at us every day at vigils. Those vigils are every day. Arlington residents gather every day to make our commitment to racial justice known. And we had hoped the town government stood in solidarity with us. We were wrong. Removing this banner is clearly not a move to represent the community or show that we value justice and equity in Arlington. This is a move that capitulates to loud, angry bigots. The rhetoric surrounding the removal of the banner shows that the select board only sought to appear committed to justice when it was a good PR move and not when it was hard work. The board should not remove the banner and should apologize for the harmful and dangerous rhetoric espoused last week. I yield my time. Thank you. And next speaker. Speaker is Rebecca Gruber. Hi, Ms. Gruber. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. If you can just say your name and address for the record. My name is Rebecca Gruber and I live at 215 Pleasant Street, Arlington. I am speaking about the decision made last week by you, the board and the town manager to remove the Black Lives Banner from our town hall. I understand that you plan to hang a different sign espousing our town's beliefs about respect for all. But in my opinion, hanging such a sign is not the same as what the Black Lives Matter sign represents which is that in a country and a community in which systemic racism exists, as I believe you all acknowledged during your comments about the decision you made, it is critical that we espouse our special recognition that Black Lives Matter. Almost all of you in your comments about your decision mentioned the anti-police mood in our town. I am not anti-police in any way, although I do think the town's handling of the Lieutenant Pedrini case has cast a very negative and unfortunate pall on our police department. And while you did not explicitly make this connection, by your comments, you implied that you believe that removing the Black Lives Matter banner will in some way diminish these tensions in our town. In fact, I think the result will be the opposite. I call to your attention the words in your recent overview report on the Lieutenant Pedrini incident and subsequent town and police actions, in which you wrote, therefore, the work now before the town, the community, and Lieutenant Pedrini relative to his actions is to translate the input from the CBI report and other venues of public feedback to cultivate trust, healing, and a pathway forward in the wake of that repudiation and many associated individual and community harms. Continuing to hang the Black Lives Matter from our town hall is one way to cultivate that stated desire for trust, healing, and a pathway forward. 
I hope that you, our town leaders, will do the right thing and reconsider your decision and keep the Black Lives Matter banner hanging. Thank you for your consideration. I'm done. Mr. Hurd, you're muted. That's why I never mute myself. Next speaker. Next speaker is Don Seltzer. Yep. Mr. Seltzer, can you hear us? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, before I begin, could I have my slides brought up on the screen? With, with the chair's assent, I can put yes. those. Yep. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you to both boards. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Uh, for a change of pace, I'd like to talk about our um, commercial base. Next slide, please. Here are all the communities in Massachusetts that collect more than $100 million in property taxes, ranked by the percentage that comes from their local businesses. Arlington is on the far right. We're dead last. Next slide, please. Here's another comparison, looking at the Metro Mayors Coalition, a group of 15 cities and towns that have joined together to pursue common interests. The other 14 cities have nearly half of their property tax revenue coming from business. Arlington is completely out of place in this group with only 5.6%. People live and work within those other communities. Not so in Arlington. 93% of our residents have to commute elsewhere. Our needs are different. Our goals should be different than these communities. We always talk about walkability as being one of Arlington's best features. But walkability only matters if there's something to walk to. Arlington's vibrancy comes in part from having neighborhood shops, restaurants, supermarkets, pharmacies, laundromats, medical offices, and similar services that we can walk or bike to. Lose those and the whole character of the town changes. Next slide, please, Jenny. Back in 2016, we thought we had a solution, the mixed use bylaw. It was supposed to strengthen our commercial districts and discovered, discourage landlords from converting businesses into apartments. It just hasn't worked out that way. There is even more incentive than ever to convert. Next slide, please. This is the Treya block with five valued businesses and their employees. Half a dozen zoning bylaws were either bent or broken so that it could be converted into an apartment building with a single token storefront too small and narrow to really be of much use. We have set an unfortunate precedent here, one that will be exploited and repeated elsewhere. Next slide, please. Will the heart of Capitol Square be next? The same landlord owns the block at Lake Street of Mass Ave and has been clearing out the businesses there. Next slide. After that, it could be Arlington Center. Again, the same owner for Medford Street and Mass Ave. We need some balance to be viable as a community. We need to be more than just a bedroom for Boston and Cambridge. Thank you for your attention. Yep. All right. And Mr. Chaplain. One second. Uh, the next uh, hand raised is Micaiah Healy. All right. Hi, Ms. Haley, can you hear us? Hello, I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? I... We can. All right. Oop, let me start my video so you can see me. Okay. Um, so I um, live on Howard Street. I'm a Precinct 14 town meeting member. Um, I'm a Black Indigenous person of color, a leader in this community. And um, I will shorten my remarks so it um, gives other people opportunity to speak tonight. Um, but it is, um, I rise tonight to um, talk to you about um, the decision to uh, have the Black Lives Matter sign displayed on our town government building. Um, I really wish I could have participated last week in the discussion last week, but I was chairing the diversity task group meeting. Um, 
And, um, you know, just for simplicity's sake, I wanted to speak tonight. You will hear the repeated um, meaning and symbolism of what this, this sign means um, throughout the night, I hope, um, because symbolically this message um, and the banner that it's raised communicates to me as a, a black person of color and a leader in this town. Um, it symbolizes to me that my life, it signals to me that you understand that my life matters. Um, and, you know, even, you know, the public may not participate in any of these boards or these discussions or these community forums. Um, though there are people that are not plugged into the community the way that uh, many of the attendees tonight are. And so the significance of the words of each word of the banner um, is, is very significant. Um, and, and so, you know, the banner has always been a placeholder for me for policy um, because I already know that my life matters, but it is, it is, it is symbolic. And so the lowering of that um, is, 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 is symbolic. It communicates a message, a message to me. Um, and there, are, and it communicates a message to those people who are not plugged into this, into the community discussion. Um, and so for those that feel unease or disruption to their way of thinking, that's the purpose is to get people to be thinking about this. Um, you know, the school department has through many, um, through the work of many, many people, but the group that I know best, the superintendent's diversity advisory committee has worked to talk to their um, administrative staff about implicit bias, about unconscious beliefs that we have. And we all have implicit bias. My say peanut butter, you say jelly. Um, and as a community, many of us are working on our biases and um, you know, it became a district goal. And so I really implore um, the leadership, the organization, the board to be doing this work um, because it's, it's clear that there is a lot of implicitness, just unconscious prejudices that, that I carry, that we all carry. Um, and many of our, the neighbors of color that I've been talking to, they said, they asked me, what, what's the rush? They asked, what's the rush in taking this, this, this down? really um and if that doesn't move you you know like the conversations that i've been having that i'm, I'm sharing with you now because i know you i know you're good-hearted um and i wanted just to to speak my mind but um if that doesn't move you then use self-interest in our town reputation as a reason to keep up the sign um you know and use cambridge and somerville as as justification that they, they've been having it up for a long time um you know we have a problem. The Suffolk, Suffolk University law student um, school did the study. Um, am I over time? I'm sorry. The Suffolk University. Just, just jumping over a little bit, if you can just wrap up this point. Okay, sorry. Um, so, I mean, we do have a systemic problem in Arlington. This, um, you know, Suffolk University has done a study, the Boston, um, about housing discrimination in Arlington ranked one of the highest. I heard about that study um, on Wednesday. Um, is really, really terrible. We have a housing issue, we have a school issue, um, the Boston Globe, and we have police and community relations that need to be healed. So as a board, I ask you, I ask you to, um, to continue to support the administrative staff, um, like, oh. you know, like Adam and, um, and, and the town just department. Just about in four minutes, if you can just wrap okay. up. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, almost uh, five, almost five. All right. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, please use the, the potential and power that you have. Thanks. All right. And the next person on the agenda. Daniel Bromberg. Yep. Yeah. Promote Mr. Bromberg. Hello. Um, Hi, Mr. Bromberg. If you could just uh, say your uh, name and address for the record. Oh, yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Daniel Bromberg. I uh, live on uh, 52 Montague Street, Arlington. Um, so I uh, just want to say um, I'm coming here from, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a relatively new uh, resident of Arlington and also pretty new to the political process. So come here from a place of, of humility and just learning and wanting to make Arlington a, a better place, culturally richer and more diverse and uh, there, there's so many people here who have so much more experience and exposure to these issues than I. But um, 
uh, still some developed some some thoughts and, and kind of done some you know work and reading. And I just want to share some of that. Uh, first, though, um, just in responding to uh, Mr. Capellian, I I would say you know I I went to a uh, a Black uh, Lives Matter uh, vigil and um, and so and uh, it was a church uh, service of the Fallen Community Church in Lexington, and you know to see um, the love and the the singing, you know, the, the opposition, there was just a few members from, from a fringe group uh, yelling in our faces. Uh, they were not able to yell at us when the entire, uh, you know, neighborhood was singing Amazing Grace, uh, led by the, the church leaders, and uh, we were all holding up Black Lives Matter signs. So I challenge those people who think, you know, about the, the, the levels of violence they were in, impugning on, on the movement that to, to go to a, a vigil or a, or a church service like that. Um, so um, as far as the, the banner, I, I had some thoughts on that as well. And just to go to a little uh, expand on the, the Somerville, you know, the Somerville mayor, uh, Joe uh, Curtitoni, uh, has kept up the sign since um, 2016. Um, I want to read a quote from him. Uh, he said, having grown up in this city, I've seen a lot of change. I've seen a lot of good. I've seen a lot when we were divided in the past based on race, based on ethnicity, but I'm proud of how this community has evolved and grown and what we've embraced, the value of the community. I believe the sign speaks to those community values. Um, and so to the extent that people um, might tune me out after a minute or so, that's really my main point is that I think that's the model uh, we want to follow. Um, on the other hand, uh, Medford uh, in August uh, sort of bowed out and they said they're worried that groups could end up jockeying for space at City Hall. Uh, this seems like a very narrow and, and short-sighted concern. Um, I think it is to make people uncomfortable and to think. Um, and I would just say consider that while I, I think it's really important to keep the banner up, the proposed sign in the, in the doorway or the placard that you know, can talk about inclusion can actually explain the sign because there's a lot of uh, education that needs to happen and perhaps just a 200 word blurb that can explain why this is actually an inclusive message. Um, for example, if I could just quickly read a, a few lines from, um, this is from uh, outfront.org, an, uh, an LGBTQ organization. Mr. Brownberg, you're just at you have three minutes, if you can just wrap up your thought. Okay, I'll just read uh, one sentence or two here and then I'll be done. Thanks. Um, we recognize that black people in America, some of whom are LGBTQ, are systematically oppressed and we stand together affirming that black lives matter. Um, <laughs> I'll just leave it there and uh, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Chaplain. Uh, the next speaker would be Nick Stein. And okay, Mr. Chair, if I could just interject that um, we're going to hear everyone under open forum um, to my colleagues on the redevelopment board. This is way beyond the scope of this joint meeting tonight. That's what I would anticipate the open forum would be addressing tonight. But as you probably have seen, um, it's 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 going a bit askew. So I would say to uh, people signing up for open forum. If it's, you can speak whatever you want to speak to, um, but would, would definitely rise to the top comments that were actually on the agenda tonight and any other comments bring to the next select board meeting, but I can't limit you to that. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you so much, Mr. Hart. Thank you. Mr. Stein, if you could please say your name and address for the record. So we can't hear you, I think, are you muted still? I think we can hear you now. Hello. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, so I, I'm Nick Stein. I live at 28 Clark Street. Um, so I just wanted to read something I wrote. Uh, Black Lives Matter is not just an ask for overt racists to stop being mean. It is a demand to eliminate white supremacy. That demand obviously cannot be met with a piece of cloth, and we must continue to pursue this outside of symbols. But the board has chosen to defang this powerful statement on the value of black lives into the liberal version of All Lives Matter, a meaningless statement of kindness to all. White supremacy is absolutely alive and well in Arlington, as we've seen with Pedrini. 
To this day, the APD refuses to fire a man who is clearly irreparably bigoted and for whatever reason claims that they can rehabilitate his disturbing worldview. You cannot teach empathy and the dignity of all humans, including those who are struggling, to someone who makes public comments like he has and be a member of groups on Facebook like the ones he was in where cops were mocking videos of folks dealing with substance abuse, poverty, and mental health issues. The Padrini saga is not an isolated flaw of the shining example, but self-protection of the department by design and all officers as well as all members of the town government that defended are complicit. Lastly, I would like to respond to the statements from Diane Mahan regarding solidarity against hate demonstration. Regarding out of town, first off, I'm an Arlington resident and I was proud to stand with them against fascism. It was also pretty clear that many of the folks on the other side were not from Arlington, nor is the organization Arlington based as far as I can tell. Further, speaking disparagingly about an organization based in Boston is out of town, regardless of who was from where, sounds like the old Arlington that opposed having the red line come to town for racist reasons. I implore the select board to reconsider their decision to take down the Black Lives Matter banner. A symbolic gesture is the least that the town can do. I yield my time. All right, Mr. Chaplain. The next speaker is Jennifer Seuss. Hi. Yes. Um, I want to talk about housing issues. <laughs> so um, I thank you guys for getting together. Um, I want to say that I am like many residents in town in that I um, love the community, love the civic and uh, the life of Arlington. And I'm also very anxious about its future. Um, I think that many people uh, have goodwill and who disagree with each other are also just anxious about our future, right? And the anxiety that I have is that I know that we can't stay in place. I know that things that are naturally affordable today will not remain so. Um, I grew up in a house in Brooklyn, New York, that was 40,000 when my parents bought it. It's still a junky house, but it's no longer 40,000, right? So just having old small houses, um, look at Palo Alto, California, does not make something affordable, right? So the way you have affordability is by having potentially smaller units, by having more units. And so I really am excited by Arlington's involvement with Metropolitan Mayor's Coalition. Um, I think that we have a crisis on our hands and that every community has to step up and do their part. It's just not okay to say that other communities need to do something and Arlington doesn't have to do anything, right? We, we all have to do our part, we're in a crisis. Um, I also think it's the right thing for Arlington, right? I think that we're losing, if you look at the trends in Arlington, we're losing um, age diversity. We have 44% fewer uh, people under 34, or between the ages of 20 and 34. We have 14% fewer people over age 65. We're losing economic diversity. We used to have nine, 10% in our kindergarten class on free and reduced lunch. And now that number is consistently under three, 6%. So we are not staying in place. We are getting to a community that is becoming wealthier and wealthier. And, um, and the way to counter that is to build more housing and is to build housing of variety of types, to build things that, that where Arlington can, whatever their choices be, has an option for them. Whether they be downsizers or young adults looking to put down roots in Arlington, um, that's what we're losing. We're losing that kind of choice. And I look forward to, um, to things being put into place that will increase that choice. And sorry, am I up out of time yet or? Oh. You, no, you. Okay. About four, <laughs> four seconds. Um, so um, just a very slight critical remark. I, 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 I have tremendous respect for every single person on this call, but I do think that the select board can do more than just sort of review some of the technical aspects of the redevelopment board's plans. I think that the, the SEC board is the policymaking body in town. It, it has a tremendous, um, it's very visible in town. And I think that the SEC board can be a leader in advocating for more housing. And I think it's the right thing to do. Thank you. All right, and Mr. Chaplain. 
Sorry. Uh, next speaker is Laura Kiesel. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Laura Kiesel. I live at 260 Mass Ave. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so I am also here tonight because I wanted to voice my uh, disappointment with the select board's vote last week to, to take down the Black Lives Matter banner. The fact that it was put on the agenda literally the day after the Back the Blue rally uh, makes it very clear that it's a capitulation to, you know, white supremacists in our town. And I want to make very clear about what this rally was because I feel like people are talking about outside agitators. This rally was brought by the spouse and sister-in-law of APD officers. They themselves do not live here. They're from Woburn. And America Backs the Blue is not from Arlington. They bring these rallies to different towns. A lot of times it attracts neo-Nazis and you have to ask yourself mm. why that is. And I just feel that Arlington has shown to me that I've lived here that it's very good at giving these grand symbolic gestures when it's popular, but as soon as there's something uncomfortable, as soon as there's pushback, they kind of just falter and fall away. And to replace this with a plaque that is basically um, saying something like all marginalizations matter, for me as someone who is part of many of those marginalizations, who is low income and is disabled, what it says to me is that you're willing to appropriate and exploit my marginalization as an excuse to not firmly assert that Black Lives Matter. My life as a low-income disabled person cannot matter in this town and cannot be equitable, and I do not feel safe in a town that cannot firmly assert that Black Lives Matter. And I really don't really, I don't really know where we go from here, but I really would implore the select board to consider the optics right now. The day before Pedrini is due to set to, to address the community, when you have all done everything to rally around him staying, and so many of us of marginalized identities had said we do not feel safe here, that you are now voting within a week of that to take down the one lip service gesture you were willing to do without any real work to try to make us feel somewhat like, and to say this at a housing forum too, where I speak to so many people of color who will not move here because they don't feel safe, or people of color who do not feel safe living here and want to move, or people who have moved <clears throat> from here because of this. All of this is moved about race and housing unless we make this an equitable place where people feel safe, and they will not unless we're willing to do more about that. So thank you for listening, and I yield my time. Ms. Tom Andrew. Speaker is Judith Garber. How many more do we have raised hands? After Judith, there are 12 raised hands. Hi, can you hear me? Eric. Yes. And just to remind everyone, you know, we have had a number of inquiries on the same subject. We do have a meeting coming up. This is a joint meeting with Austin the Redevelopment Board meant to discuss the zoning issues. There's no limit to what could be said at open forum, but we do have a meeting coming up in the next couple of weeks that people can also attend if they have comments that have already been displayed. And with that, Ms. Garber, if you can just say your name and address for the record. Hi, Judith Garber, 130 Mass Ave in Arlington. Uh, I appreciate that and I'll try and keep this as short as possible. I'm also uh, speaking about the decision to remove the Black Lives Matter banner. Uh, back in June, when the town made the proclamation that Black Lives Matter, putting up the banner was supposed to be this beginning of a long process to tackle structural racism in Arlington. We would engage our staff boards and committees and everyone to fight systemic racism. Um, last month, in an email exchange I had with town manager Adam Chapdelaine, he wrote the board would keep the banner on town hall until, until a new strategy for acknowledging the value statement of Black Lives Matter is developed and approved by the board. Uh, instead, last week, the board voted to remove the banner. Um, I don't think that the decision to put a plaque that's acknowledged that, that that's the entire, uh, just sort of a list of, uh, as Laura said, marginalizations, I don't think that is the same thing as a strategy for acknowledging the value statement of Black Lives Matter. Those are very different things. Um, I understand the town does not generally hang banners on town hall and having this banner is a little, um, it was, it was something special, but why veer from the original plan? 
the way the banner was removed with no plan um, and no plan for what we're doing to fight systemic racism in the long run. And when it was directly after these protests and the counter protests, this does not inspire my trust in town leadership. Um, when the town declared Black Lives Matter Day in June and denounced systemic racism, they had no problem putting up this banner and it, it made us look progressive. But now that it means taking real action on issues of police accountability, which as we know with the issue of Rick Pedrini, we have real issues of police accountability to, to struggle with. But now that we, it takes some real metal to do this, we don't want to declare it anymore. So I hope this is not the case. I hope that our town is really dedicated to doing what it said it would do, even if it's not the easy thing to do, especially if it's not the easy thing to do. I believe it's our responsibility as residents to express what we want our government to do and to hold you to your promises which is why I'm speaking about, about this now, and um, I yield my time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah Mr. Chaplain. Okay, uh, Mr. Hart, if I, if I could just jump in here um, and, and do one last plea, um, that this is a joint meeting between the Redevelopment Board and, and the Select Board. Um, I, I apologize to my colleagues on the Redevelopment Board um, that we what I would say to people, I understand AFR has encouraged people to speak under Citizens Open Forum, which is their right to do, um, but this is not a select board meeting. We have one coming up. Please, everyone sign up for that. Um, I'd like to, you know, if we can, and I don't think this is going to happen, but uh, if we could have the Citizens Open Forum be regarding the uh, work between the Redevelopment Board and Select Board, and as long as you want to keep the select board and citizen open forum in our next regularly scheduled meeting, you can go two, three, four hours. Um, I'm just putting that out there um, for our colleagues on the redevelopment board. It may not um, succumb to, and you may have to listen to more of this, which has nothing to do with uh, the redevelopment board and select board joint meeting. But I'm just putting that plea out there. I understand AFR has encouraged people to do this. But if you could respect what the meeting is, and we'll go on from there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chaplain. My name is Aisha Cruz. Hi, Aisha, can you hear us? I can, just trying to make sure that I get everything all set. Great. And can you say your name and address for the record? Sure. My name is Aisha. I live at 144 Lake Street. Um, a few days ago, after I found out the select board had voted unanimously to take down the BLM banner from Town Hall on September 30th, I called the board chair, John Hurd, and asked him why they made that decision so soon after the rally by pro-cop and pro-fascist organization Back the Blue. John said he and other members of the board wanted to make a point that one can support the police and also BLM. At this point, I cut him off and said, oh, so you're a white supremacist. Thank you so much for telling me. I'm not going to apologize for that. And I'd like to take a moment to make some things perfectly clear. You cannot support the movement for black lives and also support the police because the police do not support the movement for black lives. This has been made clear in Minneapolis, Ferguson, Chicago, Charlottesville, New York, Columbus, Louisville, Denver, San Jose, Los Angeles, Houston, the list goes on. You cannot support the police and also support BLM because the police in every state, city, and town assault and murder black and brown people with absolute impunity. You cannot support the police and Black Lives Matter at the same time because the police are heavily armed agents of a system that upholds white supremacy. You cannot support BLM and the police, police at the same time because white supremacy is fundamentally incompatible with black lives. You cannot support BLM and the police because supporting a white supremacist power structure makes you a white supremacist, full stop. The recording of the vote to remove the BLM banner from town hall revealed the select board to be at best, cowardly and at worst, actively upholding white supremacy in Arlington. Perhaps they are still unaware of the optics of removing a prominent symbol of an international liberatory movement in order to show support for local law enforcement? If so, allow me to enlighten them. The select board have effectively announced to the world that they will silence any resistance to white authority the moment it is no longer politically convenient to uphold it. They have done the 2020 equivalent of declaring Arlington a whites-only town. 
they have drawn back the curtain on their own pearl clutching racist paranoia and shown the rest of us exactly who they are. If the representatives of the town government do not wish for Arlington to become known as a town full of bigoted racist white people, they, and by they I mean you, have at least three actions you can take to mitigate this catastrophic blunder. One, you can return the BLM banner to town hall in perpetuity until all of us are free. Two, you can fire disgraced Lieutenant Rick Pedrini, who advocated in print for violence against protesters and allowed a man to die in, while in his custody and was formally reprimanded for the same by the APD. Three, you can defund the Arlington Police Department so we can collectively create a more just and equitable community. I would like to thank my fellow town residents for standing up for racial justice and to the select board. If you think your racism will go unnoticed, you are very, very wrong. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Chapteline. Erin Thera, and we'll promote her. Yep. <clears throat> Hello, are you able to hear me? Hi, Mrs. Farron, if you can yes. say your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Erin Farrah. I live in Quincy Heights in Arlington. Um, I'm also wanting to speak about the taking down of the Black Lives Matter sign. Um, Diane, um, I understand that you don't want to have this discussion right now. I, I guess I would recommend not having made this decision a week ago and then recommending that people speak about it after you plan to take it down. No, nope, that doesn't make sense to anyone who really cares about this issue. Um, so that's not going to happen. Um, the, the discussion about having taken it, taking it down um, sandwiched right around the Back the Blue um, rally where Pedrini is having some sort of um, coming to Jesus moment um, in front of people. And our town is being plagued by um, literal KKK stickers being stuck to BLM signs on people's lawns. Um, a BLM sign just went up in flames in next door Medford. Um, church signs have been defaced and we're taking down our, back, our um, Black Lives Matter sign. This sends a pretty clear sign I, to the residents of Arlington that we are not a supportive town of all of our residents um, and that we are not a welcoming town to um, black and brown people. It's not a town that I wanna be a part of. It's a town that I'm a little ashamed that I'm part of at this point and I would like to see that turned around. Um, I'm a citizen who cares about everyone. Um, I'm a citizen who does my part to care about my fellow neighbors. And frankly, just watching um, Diane at this meeting roll her eyes and unmute herself so that she can um, ahem during people's very thoughtful comments about caring about black and brown people is, is frankly offensive and unprofessional. Um, and shows me how little care there is for our black and brown residents in this town. Um, so I would implore the group to rethink that decision about taking down the, the Black Lives Matter sign. I think it's the very least that we can do. It's a symbolic gesture and it's only the beginning of a process that we need to undertake as a town to rethink how we deal with systemic racism in this town and beyond. And so with that, I yield my time. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Thomas Davison. Mr. Davison, if you can say your name and address for the record. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, Tom Davison, 64 Stowcroft Road. Uh, I would like to speak about housing and economic development. Um, I'm speaking tonight as a commissioner for the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Um, I want to say that the, the CAC, I want to say we support the good work of the Select Board and the Redevelopment Board and the Department of Community Development in pursuing strategies to develop affordable housing and our commercial business districts. Appreciate the outreach of the Department of uh, Community Development and to engage the community for feedback and to ask for ideas. So for the ACAC, um, part of our mission is to advocate for artists and to advise on policies that use arts and culture as tools to create cultural equity that reflects a diverse and a dynamic 
community. Um, as many of you know, Arlington lost a number of artist work and studio spaces with the move of the Arlington Center of the Arts from the Gibbs uh, School to its current location. And we also understand that there will be some artist um, spaces coming offline with the redevelopment of the building at 1165 Mass Ave. And we want to acknowledge that we understand that the Myrick family who owns this property have been significant long-term long -term supporters of the arts and cultural institutions in Arlington. So, as we continue to cultivate and, uh, affordable housing and commercial redevelopment opportunities um, and amend our zoning bylaws, the ACAC encourages integrating the principles of creative placemaking into the processes of community planning and development with the goals of supporting artists and attracting and anchoring diverse culturally rich communities to our town. Equity focused cultural policies and strategies and tools have proven in numerous communities to achieve communities of opportunity. So specifically, uh, we'd like um, to cons that uh, considerations come into these, these processes to integrate creative placemaking into Arlington's long-term, short-term, and project implementation plans when looking at affordable housing, commercial redevelopment, and in changing changes to our zoning bylaws. Uh, we'd also encourage development of opportunities for affordable work and or live work spaces for artists that encourage and attract diverse communities. Uh, we would like uh, to advocate for live work artist spaces that encourages cultural equity and diversity when considering proposals for new housing and for the redevelopment of existing properties. And as appropriate uh, to the project, evaluate opportunities to take advantage of low income housing or historic tax credits or rental subsidies that could create affordable studio live work spaces for artists and people of, of color. And as we go through these processes to determine desired outcomes that we consider. Mr. Davidson, if you can just uh, wrap up your point, you're just a little over the three minutes. Sure, thank you. Uh, last point was if we can consider cultural uh, equity as a measure for success and a guide for course correction as we continue on, on these processes. That's it, thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Chaplain. Jonathan Washer. All right, Mr. Washer, can you hear us? Nope, no you can't. Hi, how's it going? Hi. Hello, hi. Uh, address? Yep, Jonathan Washer, uh, 7 Thomas Street in Arlington. Uh, so I understand Miss Mann would like to do something better with her night, and so would we all, but this is an important message to send, and despite her attempts to undermine it, I want to voice my support of the Black Lives Matter movement. I was disgusted to see the results of the vote by this board to remove the Black Lives Matter banner from the town hall shortly after rolling out the red carpet for white nationalism masquerading as the back the blue protest on our on your doorstep. Uh, I stood as part of the counter protest to this hate group weathering physical intimidation from bikers and disgusting hate speech. I was proud of the town, however, for having that sign hanging out front. It felt supportive of the cause and letting us know that these hate groups trying to sink their claws in this community would be met with opposition. But then shortly after the protest, I heard you voted to remove it. And that is shameful. You were sending the message that Arlington's efforts to support a diverse community are performative at best. In reality, you support the hate speech ingrained in the Arlington Police Department every single day that Officer Pedrini remains employed by the town. This is a continuing disgrace. Leaving a Black Lives Matter banner on City Hall does nothing to fix that stain on justice, but it is a small and harmless message of support for the rest of the town. H how am I doing on time? You're at a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, all right, cool. I, I just want to wait for Diane to come back so I can make sure she understands that her vote uh, was directly the cause of her night now being ruined as she's showing endless disrespect for every single member of this community that's taking time out of their lives to come voice their opinions of support for people that you all voted apparently to leave behind. That's despicable at best. So I'm just going to stay here, keep talking, I guess, for my time, unless uh, Miss Mann doesn't want to come back. Uh, but, you know, Black Lives Matter, fire Pedrini, 
defund the police and refund Arlington with, uh, with, with funds that can actually do something other than cause further divides within this community. Oh, she's back. Good. Thank you. I yield my time. Mr. Chatelain, how many do we have left on the list at this point? There's uh, now 11 hands remaining. All right. Um, so at this point, let's shut down the list. So, okay. Okay. Uh, the next name is John Sanbanmatsu. Mr. Samban Matsu, can you hear us? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, you know, I just want to make clear, uh, I heard about this meeting. I, I'm not a member of uh, AFR, but I support their efforts. And I, I want to say that I also was going to say, I just find it shocking that uh, Chair Mahan has been rolling her eyes, shaking her head, groaning, getting up and down. I've never seen such unprofessional behavior in an elected representative. So what I wanted to say was indeed about uh, Black Lives Matter. You know, it's clear from Mr. Kaplan's um, earlier comments tonight that uh, Lieutenant Pedrini, this whole case and the sympathy for him, it's become a lightning rod for racists in our community and in the state. It's not an anomaly. There are a lot of people who have these sentiments, including some, unfortunately, within our own police department. I've spoken to some of the officers in our department. Some of them are wonderful uh, men and women. Some of them are very much in sympathy with what Pedrini said. And so tomorrow night, we're gonna have a Kumbaya theater uh, where this town once again has, you know, kicked the, the problem down the, the can down the road and wants things to kind of get, you know, wants everyone to get along uh, without showing its true commitment to social justice and to the people of this community. Um, you know, I apologize for interrupting a meeting that's supposed to be about, be about redevelopment, but these issues matter to many people in our community, particularly the most vulnerable. And somehow, incredibly, after two years or more of um, good faith activism by other people uh, in this community, people in our community, I just feel like the town manager, I'm sorry, and the select board is bungling this. And I, I don't understand how in the wake of a rally that was intended as pushback against this civil rights movement, which is what Black Lives Matter is, it's a civil rights movement, how the town select board could possibly have taken this vote without community input, clearly as a direct reaction to uh, and response to the um, Back the Blue rally. Uh, this issue is not going to go away. Uh, I urge people watching this call to uh, look at this letter, which I saw from Arlington Fights Racism that asks, makes eight requests to the town manager, uh, including uh, to create a, a police civilian uh, review board and calling upon the Arlington police chief to publish a statement denouncing Lieutenant Pedrini's writings for their racism and their advocacy of violence. It is incredible that after years of this, years now, the Arlington Police Department has not published such a statement denouncing Lieutenant Pedrini's writings for their racism and advocacy of violence. Um, so, so yes, I, I want to agree with other people on this call that banner should be restored. And to, and to not, I'm telling you, if you do not restore it, this issue, it, it's not going to go away by your uh, trying to placate the racists in our town. Thank you. For your right, time. Mr. Chaplain. Todd Pearson. Can I just jump in here? Because I've been sort of maligned. Um, I have not been rolling my eyes. Um, and I dare anyone to back that up. As well as anyone who knows me, my family circumstances, when I've stepped away, because we've had close to two hours of a citizen open forum that has nothing to do with select board and Arlington redevelopment board um, conversations regarding um, joint articles, regarding uh, economic development, regarding the CDBG CARES Act. Um, so I, I've had to step away. 
And I would say to not the people who are critical of me and who are a bit hypocritical, does anyone know who knows my family and knows um, in terms of people of color that are my immediate family? Um, I'm not going to take your negative comments on that, but I want to say to, again, not only to my colleagues on the board, but my colleagues on the redevelopment board, I apologize that you've been dragged into this because this Citizens Open Forum has been um, publicized in a respect that it shouldn't be, which is um, the joint articles and concerns between the select board, the redevelopment board, and making sure our businesses can thrive uh, as well as zoning and affordable housing issues which most of the remarks on the Citizens Open Forum have nothing to do with that. And honest to goodness, I, I would appreciate if somehow that that was just addressed with me and didn't involve all of you. But I apologize, you're gonna to have to continue to uh, bear through this. And I see a bit, a lot of hypocrisy here. So uh, I'll yield my jumping into uh, our chairman, Mr. Hurd, and our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, to see who's next on the list. Mr. Beerson, if you can say your name and address for the record, please. Sure. My name is Todd Beerson, and I'm 79 Harlow Street. And I want to thank Diane for illustrating the problem better than I could possibly do with the speech that I wrote. So I'm going to throw out what I said. And I'm just going to point out, Diane, it's not going to be me that makes the supercut of you rolling your eyes at every compassionate and important statement that was made by people here to show up on YouTube or something like that. You were very much rolling your eyes. You were very much clearing your throat. I'm not trying to attack you. I like you. I think you're a good person, Diane, but I think you're really in the wrong here and you owe a lot of people an apology. To the rest of you who are here to work on the redevelopment issues, I think those are important. But I think you guys are making the same mistake that gets made over and over again for not recognizing what's in front of you and what's important. I haven't been sent by AFR or Antifa or the Bolshevik revolution. I don't even know when or where AFR meets or really who they are. I'm just here as a person who sees what's going on in this town in terms of the racism and people trying to point at possible solutions and people trying to, um, trying to fight that by saying that it's either black or blue, it's one or the other, creating these false dichotomies. Well, I was at one of those protests, the counter protests, it was actually pretty peaceful except for the people coming by and you know, harassing us. And I'm not sure everybody in the select board was there because you, I think you would have seen something different and voted differently had you done that. So think about the optics, that's all I'm gonna say. Think about the optics. You're pulling down the sign. Pedrini's about to go in front of uh, the town and have his kumbaya moment, as was mentioned earlier. The rally came and bullied you into pulling it down. And you're not showing the police any support by doing any of this. If that's what you're intended to show them that they have support, the support of the town. You're creating a bigger issue. And I really recommend you deal with it. I yield my time. I hope you get a chance to talk about the redevelopment stuff because that's important, but nowhere near as important as this stuff. Thank you. All right, Ms. Chaplain. Steve Revella. Yep. Mr. Revelak. Hello, Mr. Hurd. Hello, Hi. Mr. Chaplain. This is Steve Revelak. I live at 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, my comments tonight relate to the community conversations, particularly the one on race and housing. Namely, I wanted to uh, show my appreciation to all the folks who were involved in putting that together. I mean, housing in the 20th century, is, I mean, it really boils down to exclusion, and this is not an easy thing to talk about. Um, single family zoning grew out of a Supreme Court decision that made race-based zoning illegal. Two of Arlington's big farms that got subdivided into residential neighborhoods, Kelwin Farm and Allen Farm, they were de originally deeded with racial covenants, which basically is a, a deed for whites only. 
Arlington's red line map had no red on it because in 1940, the black population of Arlington was 35 people. This only rose to 39 in 1960 and a little over 100 by 1970. In 1973, our town meeting passed a bylaw to a moratorium banning the construction of apartments for two years, followed by downzoning the town, um, reducing housing options, apartments especially, and then voting to reject the red line. So, I mean, we've we've done this we've done this as much as any other municipality in the united states and our built environment reflects that um, i'm hoping this is something we could address going forward i would like to uh show some support for ms Suze's comments in that you know more housing a more variety of housing and it's not something that we shouldn't be concentrating just on some narrow corridors we should be really looking at the effects you know, looking at doing this throughout the town's neighborhood. But um, again, I think that was the, you know, I got a lot out of the um, community conversations on race and housing. And I'd like to say thanks to, um, thank you guys for putting that together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right. Michael Brown. Okay. Hey, Mr. Brown, can you hear us? Oh, how do I, uh, oh, start the video. Hi, uh, my name's Michael Jacoby Brown. I live at 10 Brattle Terrace in Arlington. I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 17. And um, I just wanna say I felt really sad to learn just yesterday that the Black Lives Matter banner at Town Hall was voted to be taken down. I only learned about it last night. It wasn't even in the paper three days later. Um, and uh, I would hope that the board of uh, uh, those, a select board would wait until we can listen to the impact on the black residents of the town of taking the banner down. Thank you. All right, and Ms. Chaplin. Brad Adams. Okay. Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. If you just Great. say your name and address for the record. Yes, thank you. This is Brad Adams. I'm at 27 Mile Street. So I want to speak on the removal of the BLM banner. There's a grassroots social justice movement that's been going on for over a hundred days. Uh, while standing vigil, I've seen hate being screamed at us. Uh, I've seen accusations of being murderers and pedophiles. I have faced threats of sexual violence and I've had white power yelled at me. And then the police called on me because I don't know. We've seen Klan stickers showing up across our town. So do I feel like it's time for the battery to come down? No, I, I don't think we've solved it yet. Uh, but I've also seen a wave of encouragement and support from you know local people standing with us, uh, people driving by, honking their horns, cheering along. Uh, also from neighboring towns and residents of those kind of struck dumb thinking, whoa, Arlington? Arlington's out here? Like, yeah, we're out here on the street. And then there was a rally that showed up that had organizational roots with the largest anti-Muslim hate group in the US. Ish. Uh, it was also assisted in organization by families of local police and that event itself generated a cost that was paid out to the police which strikes me as fraught to say the least uh, and a conflict, conflict of interest to say the most. It's over 100 days of a grassroots local movement here in the streets of Arlington. Uh, an activist said something to me a while ago that kind of struck me. She said, if you ever wondered what you would have done during the civil rights movement, it's whatever you're doing right now. And I like to think that taking down our only banner and statement isn't what we're doing right now. There isn't a face of local government that this issue doesn't touch. Black Lives Matter. And I think I have just a bit of time left, so I just want to say, uh, Taraya, we miss you very much. Best sushi around. Hope we can welcome you back. I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chaplain. 
Robin Harney. And where are we on the list? Uh, after this next speaker, there are six hands raised, though one of them has already spoken, so I, I would imagine you wouldn't allow that. Nope. All right. Hi. Hi. Um, Can you just say your name and address for the record? Okay. Yeah. I'm Robin Harney, um, 57 Lake Street. Okay. Um, so I was originally not going to speak tonight because of the targeted harassment and threats I've been receiving on an ongoing basis um, from right-wing vigilantes, both local and non-local, for speaking out on this issue. Um, but it's too important to keep silent, so I have decided that I will speak out. Um, last week, John Hurd said that he thinks that protesters naming fascism as fascism is beyond the pale, but fascism itself is what is beyond the pale. This is what Elizabeth Pedrini, sister-in-law of Lieutenant Rick Pedrini and wife of APD officer Rob Pedrini and the hate group America Backs the Blue brought to Arlington last week. This group rallied in a town where they do not live, citing among their grievances the Black Lives Matter banner over town hall. In response, you immediately voted to remove the banner, and in doing so, you validated their tactics, including their harassment, homophobia, transphobia, and threats on my life. You have made all marginalized residents of Arlington less safe, literally, measurably less safe, but particularly Black residents, and for this, you are complicit in white supremacy. The select board's claims that the Black Lives Matter movement and supporting police are not in conflict make no sense in the context in which they were presented. If that were the case, then none of your points about supporting police would have been relevant to last week's agenda item, which was the Black Lives Matter banner. The truth is police and the Black Lives Matter movement are in conflict because we have a deeply racist police department in Arlington. All residents, but especially black residents, deserve better than the disrespect you have shown this week. The banner should stay up, but more importantly, you should start treating black people like their lives actually matter. And that begins with acknowledging the problems in our police department. Police families invited fascists to our town. Shoving the Pedrini issue under the rug has allowed racism to spread further throughout the department and has made everyone in Arlington less safe. The APD has demonstrated zero understanding of the problems in their department, as evidenced by the recent Visions report. Pedrini continues to do harm, and he continues to enjoy widespread support from the department. There has been no um, acknowledgement of the harm of his words um, from any of the other officers in the department. And he is not the only problem officer. We know this um, based on the fact that he has received awards um, while he was out on leave getting disciplined. This didn't happen in a vacuum. It happened within a racist yeah, white Robin, you're just at three minutes if you okay. can just wrap up Great. your point. So in, in short, um, we need to fire Pedrini, listen to Arlington's black community and defund the APD. All right, Mr. Chaplain. Uh, we have uh, Kevin Heaton, uh, who was the first speaker, was unable to connect. We'll give him a, give another chance. Yep. Mr. Heaton, can you hear us? Hi, my name is Kevin Heaton. I'm at 252 Mass Ave in Arlington. I also wanted to share my disappointment on the removal of the Black Lives Matter sign. I mean, especially when you voted for it a day after a racist rally was allowed in town. I mean, to me, that's just a slap in the face to I mean, all the uh, people of color and disadvantaged people who live here and who, who feel unsafe uh, because of uh, Rick Pedrini being allowed on the force to stay on the police force and other 
actions that have happened in town. I mean, and just saying, well, all lives, putting something up that says all lives matter, okay, that's not the issue. I mean, that'd be like showing up at a funeral and saying, well, all deaths matter. Okay, well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, these the black people that are that are being targeted. I mean, just the other day on the news, there was a story about um, a, a blind black woman in Boston who was run over with her with her two kids who was run over, and the driver just kept going, and the, the cops have done practically nothing about it. And obviously, if if she was white, it'd be a different story. So, I mean, you need to the sign needs to stay up and. Padrini needs to go. That's the very least. And I'll yield back the rest of my time. All right. And Mr. Chaplain. Canon G is the next man. Shannon, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you folks hear me? Yes, we can. If you can say your name and address for the record. Yep, my name is Shannon Gimerick. I live at 38 Lake Hill Avenue here in Arlington. Um, I know it's late, and I know a lot of folks have said more eloquently what I'm going to say. Um, so in the interest of the fact that Arlington has been a welcoming community to me so far, um, and my family, and the folks that I choose to call my family that might not be my blood, um, I just want to say that one of, when I was a new, uh, newer resident to this town, I attended a select board meeting and um, I was really enthused to see the unanimous signing of um, a, what is better known as a bathroom bill for transgender folks to use whatever bathroom they choose in Arlington was proudly signed by every member of the select board meeting. And as somebody who identifies as non-binary, that was really meaningful to me to join a community and feel really welcomed and feel supported. And I thought at that time, wow, what a great choice I've made to be a member of this community. Um, and so to that end, I just want to say uh, how disappointed I am to know that a community would choose to um, not be as welcoming and kind and show as um, avid support to other members of our community by removing the Black Lives Matter banner. Um, I think that it is really clear that there is overwhelming support of, the, of our Black community, of the people who fight for racial justice. And I just think that, um, I hope that you will reconsider with all of these moving words that have been said tonight, how we can be a more welcoming community to everybody. And in regards to making it that welcoming place for people to move um, and live, I think that that also addresses um, the other issue at hand tonight, which is just this issue of making uh, our community more affordable for people to live, to make it more diverse, to welcome in these new voices, to grow and learn and really be um, a rich group of people who can uh, learn a lot from each other and become better. And I thank you for your time. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Mr. Chaplain. Martha Vreeland. And how many is on the list after this? After this, there's three, uh, three hands. Okay. Hi, Ms. Reland. Can you hear us? I can hear you. All right. If you can just say your name and address for the record. Sure. Um, my name is Martha Reland. I live at 42 Richfield Road. Uh, and I would like to respect, respectfully speak to the BLM banner and the APD issue. And I assure you, I'm neither hateful or bloodthirsty. Um, and I apologize to the board for keeping you later than is usual, but this is the only forum available to us before the banner is taken down. Um, I, I would urge us not to compare the Black Lives Matter movement to the Arlington Police Department and, and not give them the same type of support that we're trying to give to the Black Lives Matter movement. The BLM represents a marginalized group of Americans whose ancestors were stolen from their countries, used as slaves, treated as animals, prevented from buying land and homes, and targeted by hate crimes by both civilians and law enforcement. Today, Black Americans are disproportionately targeted by law enforcement, which must change. 
APD consists of brave men and women who are paid by the town of Arlington to protect and to serve all people of Arlington. Every day they may be putting their lives on the line for us and I, I cannot even imagine what it's like to do that. They deserve our they deserve our support and respect when they fulfill their duty to serve all people of Arlington. However, when an officer publicly spews hate speech for any marginalized group, is against police reform and promotes violence, that officer cannot be trusted to serve all people of Arlington, does not deserve our respect and does not belong in the APD. By permanently hanging the BLM banner and by taking action to remove Padrini from the APD, Arlington can show that we truly support our fellow black Arlingtonians and all people of color. I'm not opposed to hanging additional signage in the town lobby that expands Arlington's commitment to equality for all people, but it cannot replace the Black Lives Matter banner. If it does, we will show that Arlington talks but does not act on behalf of BLM. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chaptain. Next speaker is Sharon Shalou. Hi, Ms. Shalou, can you hear us? Hi. Hi. Um, so, um, I, it says I'm muted, but you can hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Um, you can okay, say great. your name and address for the record. My name is Sharon Shalo. <laughs> It's a losing battle, that pronunciation, but um, Shalo, uh, I live at 8 Ravine Street. I'm a 30-year resident of Arlington. Um, the last time I came before the select board was a year before the whole Padrini debacle started um, to register a complaint, a different complaint about APD, one that our town manager said he wouldn't question, um, that two select board chairs said they couldn't get involved with. And then another select board member listened to and commiserated with, but seems to have done a complete about face on, um, on positions. So, um, so here I am again. I really honestly thought when the Padrini thing broke that you would take, take action and something would change. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going back there, you know, because I'm done with you guys on that one, but I'm still here on what, what's going on with our current crisis. And I have to say that what you guys did last week at your meeting was just what you did when you made that RJ decision. Um, you tried to like quickly get rid of a problem rather than engaging it. And um, to, to present quite a dramatic proposal and vote on it in the same meeting Maybe, maybe your procedures allow that, but that just wasn't good policy. So I think the reason you're hearing from so many, and I do want to say that Arlington Fights Racism has nothing to do with my presence here, but I think the reason we're, you're hearing from so many has a lot to do with your process. And if you had had a better process where you would have proposed it and would have invited feedback, we could have had this debate and maybe we could have made a better decision. So I'd like you to all take that home to bed with you. Um, there were some odd remarks like, we'll take the sign down because we have, to, we have to make room in our town hall for bigots and racists. I mean, so we have, I guess. But you can't have a housing discussion and affirm your decision that you want a more diverse community and then do things like this at the same time. You make a diverse community not just by building housing, but by making this a community that people want to come to. And right now, we don't look good. So I'd like you to think about this is not divorced from housing. This is not divorced from the future of Arlington. This is not divorced from a more equitable community, a more diverse community. It's not divorced from housing. It's not divorced from anything making sure that Black Lives Matter is at the core of everything we do as a community. And you can't run away from it. You can't placard your way out of it. And really- Shayla, you're just at three minutes here. Okay. And the other thing you just wanna think about is if you put that placard inside Town Hall, who's the one, who are the people who feel welcome to come in there to read it? 
and you put something outside, you can talk to the whole town. So I just want to say I was really disappointed last week. And I, I think you've really got to take this home and think it over again, because I think you're making a new mistake. And I think we're getting into more trouble. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Ezra Fisher. And one more after this? Correct. Yep. Hi, Mr. Fisher. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. If you can just say your name and address for the record. Sure. Ezra Fisher, 32 Thorndike Street. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, I sent an email to the select board and to the town manager last week um, as soon as I heard about the Arlington, um, about the decision to take down the Black Lives Matter banner from City Hall. Um, and I actually got a response from Adam, so thank you. Um, and Adam's reasoning that he offered um, behind taking down the banner, that decision, um, and I'm going to quote directly from the email, was to refocus the work here locally on actual policy and programming that can improve racial equity in town. So I'm all in favor of, of focusing on policy. Um, I actually responded to that um, and more or less said, great, what's the policy? Um, and I didn't get a response. Um, and so, you know, it seems to me the question is what has changed since June? If you're taking it down to further some sort of anti-racist policy change, what is the policy change? That should be an easy question to answer. If that's the true reason for taking the banner down, that should have almost been like a form response to my email. These are the policy positions we're changing. I'm left believing that that's not the real reason. Um, and that's, you know, that's really disappointing as a resident. Um, I would expect, uh, I would expect if you're gonna take down something symbolic to get something real done, um, I don't really agree with that decision, but if you're gonna do it, you should be able to explain what those policy changes are. Thanks. Thank you. And Mr. Chaplain. Last name is Ben Ruddick. Let me just. Uh... Yep. There we go. Hi. Hi, Mr. Ruddick. Hey. Um, ben Rudick, 40 Web Cow Out Road. Let me end you on a bit of a positive note. Um, I have the pleasure of knowing most of you um, and look forward to meeting the rest that I, that I haven't gotten to know well. Um, it's just exciting to see you guys come together and talk about housing. This is uh, about as thorny and difficult of an issue as you could possibly imagine in terms of its complexity and, and all of the intersecting aspects it hits on from traffic to schools to the environment to the the, the, the appearance of our neighborhoods to everything about our lives gets touched by this. And um, I really encourage you all to continue um, the select board, particularly to continue to convene these broad meetings of, of, of ARB, maybe bring in the school committee, you know, whoever you need to among our town to have the most informed, thorough discussion about housing. I mean, you, you, you all are really smart, passionate people that there's a tremendous amount of expertise I see amongst you. Um, and uh, it's, it's exciting to see you guys, uh, get so serious about housing. Um, and I know there's a lot of passion in town to, um, to support the efforts you put forth. So anyway, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for evening. I know that especially the ARB members are probably gotten to a little bit of different discussion tonight than they may have expected. <laughs> um, but I, I hope that doesn't dissuade you from continuing to joining with the select board to, to be part of these joint conversations. Um, and just know there's a lot of um, passion in town for positive change and uh, we can make things better here. So thank you all. Thank you. And with that, we will bring our open forum to a close. Future meetings. <laughs> Adam, do we have, or Jenny, do we have a timeline for what we're looking for for future meetings? I know we're going to have to, are we going to table this until we see what comes in for articles? So I, I would presume that we'll want the two chairs along with Jenny and I to talk about articles that come in. Um, and I guess we could then determine between the two chairs, again, and Jenny and I, if another meeting is necessary before the special town meeting 
or if we want to then maybe meet, um, you know, at, as we're talking about the, the, the annual town meeting warrant opening sometime in December or January. So I, I think maybe in a week's time, we could connect and um, then advise the two boards on whether or not another joint meeting is more short term or a little more midterm. All right. And with that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> Does anyone want to stay? Motion okay. to adjourn to A or B too. Yeah. Do a second from the A or B? Gene? Second. David, okay. Right. Attorney Heim? I'm going to just walk through uh, each one at a time, and I apologize if I get the order of uh, different boards mixed up um, in terms of who's who's the current, I'm sorry, I get the order of folks mixed up on the uh, ARB. Um, I'll take the ARB first. Um, Mr. Benson. Uh, yes. Mr. Watson. Yes. Ms. Einstein. Einstein. Yes. Uh, Mr. Lau. Yes. Ms. Zembury. Yes. It's an unanimous vote by the ARB. And now the select board. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's a unanimous vote by the select board. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night, guys. Take care. Be Good safe. Night. Good night, folks. Good night.